Uh, Brother Randy Ryder, uh, uh, what you do is something that definitely addresses a serious problem in our community. And it's a gap that obviously m we must work on to try to close. Uh, and I need for you to share with me so everyone out there uh, can, uh, can understand uh, how, to, uh, how to get in touch with you and, and what it is that you can do that, uh, that is so vital. Uh, you have Keeping It Real Law Project, and I know that that's an incredibly unique uh, organization and you are the CEO. So let us know what it is that we need to know about what you're doing, who needs to get in touch with you, and how they can get in touch with you. Go ahead, sir. Well, first I'd like to start off by saying thank you for the opportunity okay. to uh, share this information with the public uh, to, to let them know that there's an entity such as mine that exists in the state in, in, in the city of Chicago. <clears throat> I um, created this program because I noticed a big gap in legal knowledge and assistance. And, and I think that is one of the major factors in the disproportionate incarceration of, the, of the young African American males. They don't have they don't have access to quality uh, and an affordable legal assistance uh, that will, that is really out to uh, their, have their best interests at heart. Uh, we have to be we have to face facts that they reinstituted slavery under the guise of the Thirteenth Amendment. Specifically, if you're duly convicted of a crime, you are in fact in effect placed back in chattel slavery. You know, they can compel you to work and they can confine you. Uh, uh, for, and, and, but what it does mostly in the context of our situation is it renders our male population unemployable. And also it, 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 uh, it excuses uh, the denial uh, participation and in in opportunity of a, a particular class of, of young men simply based on the fact that they've got they have a criminal record. Everybody in our community at this time is concentrating on reentry. While that is a def definite need, there is a definite need for reentry programs. We need to change our way of thinking and start talking about pre-entry rather than re-entry. Uh, I don't have to I don't have to re-enter if I don't ever enter. So um, and a lot of the, the cases that are happen in our community are based on the, the denial of our our constitutional rights. And because we don't know we have no way to, we have no reason or no, or, or no uh, inclination to address that issue because um, we assume, we've been taught and raised to believe that uh, we are to obey without question white authority. Therefore, if they arrest us or they do something to us, we had it coming. That's our attitude. Uh, even though we, we are very well aware of, of, of the constant, uh, uh, the constant uh, situations where people have been falsely, uh, have been falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. So they are not going to change how they act towards us. They've been acting like this towards us since we've been over here, since we came over here on the boat. In fact, the, person, the first police force was the, was the slave patrol. That was the first police force in the United States. So we've never had a good relationship. We ran away 
get our freedom, they brought us, the police brought us back. So we've never had a, a, a positive relationship with law enforcement. They're all, they're, they're, they operate on the premise that we are all criminals until proven otherwise. If we're facing this paradigm, what are we going to do? We don't have the ability to uh, go out and hire lawyers.